This is now a, a pretty important uh, um, foil that I'm gonna show you here. Um, probably something that you're noticing over here in the middle, isn't this kind of nice? A rotating DNA molecule. So uh, why am I showing this to you? You should, you should kind of appreciate that DNA has a three dimensional structure. Um, it's not flat, uh, even though we have to draw it flat in, into our notebooks because um, otherwise it's difficult to, to draw. But in reality, it's a three dimensional structure and uh, it's also so called a double helix. It's a, it's a spiral, as you can also see. And uh, because, of course, uh, this double helix, uh, this rotating molecule over here is a little bit too difficult to draw, um, I'd like to ask you if you maybe draw the one thing over here, uh, the one on the left, into your notebook. And uh, some of the things that you probably already realize is, is our little friend over here, the uh, nucleotide. And you can now see that essentially I've uh, arranged many of them um, here together. Um, and uh, that's basically something that um, I encourage you to draw. So um, now let's have a look. Um, first of all, um, you see that there is a phosphate and the sugar. And the, uh, So I'm going to write this. Here. That's over here, the phosphate. You have the sugar and you have the base over here. So the base could be either A, T, G or C. And you um, see that over here on the other side, you also have this, but it's pointing into the other direction. Um, and that's uh, very typical of, of DNA, the two DNA strands. So that's uh, one strand over here on the left, and that's another strand over here on the right. They are anti-parallel. Anti-parallel is a fancy way of saying that they're pointing into opposite directions. So that is important uh, because we do not have nucleotides for the left side and for the right side. We're using the same nucleotides. Um, but in order to make this fit, uh, we have to flip uh, one strand uh, upside down, so to say, around. And if you um, now uh, notice another thing, I'm just going to abbreviate this B over here. Maybe, okay, I'm going to just abbreviate this as B, over, that's base. And you see that the two bases are together here in, in the middle. And no, B is not a good idea. I'm going to erase this. I'm actually going to, um, yeah, actually give a real base in here. So let's say that this one over here is uh, b uh, base A. And if there's base A over here on one side, then there must be a T on the other side. That's a basic rule. And these two bases over here are bonded together with hydrogen bonds. And I'm going to make dotted points here. And there are two hydrogen bonds between A and T. And A and T, these bases are said to be complementary. Complementary means that... Uh, uh, they fit together like a puzzle, so to say. Okay, And if I have a G over here, then there must be a C on the other side. And I have uh, three hydrogen bonds between G and Cs. Now, is it also possible to have a, a, a C over here? Of course. And a G over here, that's of course also possible. One, two, three. Is it possible to have, um, I don't know, another A, T over here or T, A? Yeah, whatever. Um, it's, called, it's called T, A. And there are two hydrogen bonds. Okay, and uh, two of these over here together, uh, that's a base pair. I'm not going to write, well, uh, do you want me to write this? I don't know. Base pair. So um, in this DNA, how many base pairs do you see? Well, see so one, two, three, four base pairs. And how many ba base pairs are there in a cell of a human being? In one cell, three billion approximately. That's, that's a lot. A lot. Uh, 3 billion is 3,000 million. Um, so we d dealt with the hydrogen bonds, but essentially I forgot another really important one because did you actually see that these uh, uh, nucleotides over here, they're not connected yet? And that's something important. I, ha I have to connect this corner over here together with the next phosphate. And this one here as well. And this one here as well. And I have to do the same over here. The same over here. The same over here. Just make sure that you're connecting carbon number three. So that's uh, carbon one, that's carbon two, and that's carbon three. Okay, that's important. So you always have to use the the lower uh, left uh, corner of the um, um of the uh, the oxy the oxyribose sugar. Yeah, yeah it's always the lower left corner. And uh, these bonds are strong covalent bonds. The ones here, these are hydrogen bonds in the middle. I'm gonna label this somehow in here. So hydrogen H bonds. And uh, these bonds over here are pretty strong bonds. I'm going to label this. These are called these are covalent bonds. These are phosphodiester. Diester bond. Because it links to the phosphate over here. That's a phosphate. That's a phosphate. That's a phosphate. That's a phosphate. And that's a sugar. The deoxyribose. Sugar, sugar, 
sugar, sugar. So what I have is, is a phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar. And it's known as the sugar phosphate backbone. The sugar phosphate backbone of the DNA. And of course, you also have one on the other side. Uh, not, uh, no, no, no need to explain that. So it's the sugar phosphate backbone, and the, it's important. To, to, there was once a multiple choice question. I remember on the IB, and uh, they were asking, okay, how are the bases connected? The bases are connected, of course, to the sugar, and not to the phosphates. Well, that's uh, important here as well. Okay, the bases here are connected to the sugar and not to the phosphate. There was a, a, a question once, uh, once uh, about that. So. <clears throat> what else do we have over here? Uh, so we have the base pairs, we have the hydrogen bonds, we have the covalent bonds. So let's have a look how, <coughs> excuse me, over here. Um, the sugar phosphate backbone is this one. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to draw this. Um, yeah, it's this one here on the back. And the bases, you can see that they're in the middle. Okay, so the bases are, are here in the middle. And over here, you have another way of, of, um, of drawing this here. The ba that's basically, that's a base pair. In the middle, okay. Unfortunately, it's white. I colored it white now, so it's it's difficult to see. These are the base pairs in the middle, and the orange thing over here that's the sugar phosphate backbone. Okay, so that's uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I would say. Um, let's have a look what I have to say over here. Okay, the hydrogen bonds between the bases. The, ooh, well, it's good. That's went fast. Okay, hydrogen bonds between the bases. It's a complementary base pairing um, is important, and there's also so-called anti-parallel um, strands. And anti-parallel means that the DNA is pointing into opposite directions. Now, is there another point, or are we already going to the? Yes, there's also called a so-called a sugar phosphate backbone that the DNA has. So, and that is uh, pretty much it. You have to be able to draw this. Uh, you also have to be able to uh, recognize, uh, of course, a DNA molecule. So, and I want to give you an example of uh, what is not a DNA molecule. Is if, for example, over here we have somewhere. Let me, uh, let me, I don't know. I'm going to erase this T over here right now. And if I include here a U. If there's a U over here, now I would like to ask you, if this is the case, and this does happen during a process called transcription, um, that it's possible to have DNA on one side over here. And what do I have on the other side over here? On the other side, this one here must be RNA then. Um, and if this is RNA, then these sugars here must be ribose sugars. Okay, so this is uh, basically now not a DNA molecule anymore, but the, there's DNA over here on the right side. And this one over here is RNA, and this RNA is a copy of the DNA. Okay, so I'm just uh, saying this is that you generally got to be careful, um, um, and you got to watch the bases here. Okay, but uh, that's not uh, what I want to uh, have in here right now, because I'm talking about DNA only. Um, so uh, therefore, you have to have a T in here. But occasionally it can be that there is one side is uh, one side is DNA, the other one is RNA. But this happens during, for example, transcription, and it also, uh, yeah, uh, specifically during transcription. But that is essentially then not a, the DNA structure that we're talking about. It's something something different. So okay, uh, so this was uh, basically it. Um, and now that's uh, essentially that um, all I want I want to say concerning DNA structure.